Wedge ladders are a really important skill development tool. So we're going to work on ladders in trajectory, going up and down using the MLM, and then we're going to work on that distance progression. So one of the things that controls your launch, and the best wedge players have a low launch and high spin, is how much you can lean the shaft and control your dynamic loft. So in order to do that, you want to make sure that you don't have a whole lot of wrist set going back. Most people intuitively think if I set the club and I can really control the angle, the reality is if you get too much of that too soon, then what happens is the torso tilts back and you end up letting the shaft angle out. It's really hard to control. Great wedge players, they're really elite. They actually have wider arcs going back and maintain their wrist angle so they can really deliver less dynamic loft via a lot of rotation through the ball. So when we're working on these wedge ladders, when we go with trajectory, we're really trying to work on understanding how to control that dynamic loft. Then the length of our swing is also going to determine the trajectory. Obviously, if we add more speed, we're going to get a little bit more lift. But we're looking for shots that don't have a really big peak height. Great wedge players are keeping that ball certainly under about 70 feet. Some of the really good ones, it's going to be no more than 50 feet high. So it's really important to understand controlling it via the dynamic loft. So I've got my MLM set up. I'm going to work on some trajectories. And obviously, once we open up after the report, we can see those different trajectories. It can show how much that shaft lean is going to determine how high the ball goes. We can also experiment with our ball position. But the key is to try and maintain good contact. We don't want to get too steep down on the ball. That's all a byproduct of how well our torso rotates. Great wedge players are very rotational. They don't have a lot of slide because then it gets very steep into the ball. It's really hard to control that dynamic loft. We want to have a wider arc and a lot of pivot so we can control that dynamic loft. So let's try a couple here. We're going to start with something pretty low. So I'm going to make sure I'm in range of my MLM here. Okay, so ball's kind of in the middle of the stance wider arc and I'm just gonna obviously gonna pivot you can see there that ball's come out nice and low I'm just gonna pivot. looking at that launch pretty straight lower flight most good wedge players when people see it they're really surprised at how low the ball comes out it really has a click to it too but what happens is it comes out and then it lands and it stops really, really quickly. It comes up and then it comes down. It doesn't have this big ballooning flight. That's important because when you get a lot of elements and a lot of wind, you need something that's very predictable. That lower flight, low launch, high spin in a variety of conditions is still gonna stop. All right, so I'm gonna try and go a little further and go a little higher, but not too high because remember, I wanna keep that flight down under that sort of 65 foot line. Here we go. Wide arc, pivot, and you can see the ball's coming out low. That's the advantage of a premium golf ball. But the other piece is I'm not taking much divot because I'm just rotating and the club is traveling very shallow relative to the ground so I can control my spin loft, my attack angle and my dynamic loft. Let's try a couple more. So that's how, you know, our trajectory is very much determined by how wide the arc, how much we lean the shaft. If I wanted to go higher, I could have less shaft lean and I would obviously then maybe open the face a little bit of the dress. So wide, less lean, that ball's coming out higher. And I'm obviously gonna be able to see that with the launch, but I'm gonna be able to feel that when I look at the report on the MLM after I've hit my had my session. So that's a way to work on ladders if we were trying to work on our trajectory but remember i really want you to have the sensation embrace that lower launch high spin so if you get face on you can see the ball's kind of in the middle to the back of my stance so i'm going to be shallow i'm definitely working the rotary fashion so i can control that dynamic loft for that low launch higher spin so here we go so wide arc pivot and that abbreviated fire through here, that's ensuring I'm keeping that dynamic loft down through the shot, which is really important to that low launch and high spin. Now, if it comes to distance control and want to work those ladders a little bit differently, now I'm going to change how far back I take the club and then the rate of my rotation. 
So what we want to try and make sure is we don't want to start changing this drastically because that gets really hard then our body starts to stop rotating and it gets into a tilting mechanism. What we want to see is, okay, the length of the swing still with a wide arc, so obviously a shorter shot, slower pivot, it's not going to go as far. A longer shot with a faster pivot is going to go further, but I'm still maintaining the integrity of the dynamics so I can control that dynamic loft and keep that high spin, but yet with that low launch. So again, it's the rate of our body's rotation and the dynamic loft we're delivering is going to control a lot of the, the distance along with how long the, the swing is. So I'm going to hit three shots. I'm going to hit one that's pretty short. I'm going to hit one that's sort of medium length and I'm going to hit one longer. And they're all going to kind of have the same tempo. And the only thing that's going to dictate the distance is actually going to be the length of the swing. So I'm going to rotate the same. So ball position the same. We're going to go with a shorter shot. Back. Rotate through. Okay? So that ball's probably carried about 50 yards there. Maybe, maybe a little less. Okay, so now I'm going to go a little bit longer, keeping the same rate of rotation. So the longer arc is going to send the ball further. So again, that ball's probably carried another 15 yards further. And then finally, I'm going to go with my longest probably swing and be rotating at the same pace. So here we go, keeping that launch down a little bit sharply. understand is that you want to have the same sort of tempo so that you can repeat consistently on the golf course invariably things fasten up the tempo is your mechanism your glue to hold your swing together so you want this tempo to be very smooth almost like you're tossing a ball so it's repeatable as soon as you start to get fast now it makes it more challenging with the dynamics also tends to get your impact location all over the face and we want that to be in the center a few grooves up so we can get some control if we really want to spin it we can get it out here on the toe so that we can actually get a little bit more speed with a little less smash that's really useful closer to the green but remember when you're working those ladders for your distance control and how hard you're hitting the ball from a trajectory standpoint you want to regulate the length of the swing the ball position and then your face angles those variables use the MLM so that you have a good understanding and feel of what you're actually able to do if you can do that now you're having meaningful and purposeful practice which you can take out on the golf course so remember the other thing you're trying to do is figure out how far you hit it with each of your wedges you mix it up I encourage you to use four wedges from the pitching wedge all the way to the lob wedge start to understand that you're going to have a lot of those shots inside 140 yards the more opportunities that you have with that the more wedges you've got the better chance you have of scoring the lower scores the more fun your game's going to be